mixture of rice and other ingredients. I don't know what it is, but hey, it's good. I can yeah. definitely taste the pecan, I mean peanuts. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, it's like a hot sundae. But what you know is it's good. Yeah. Diet is such a difficult topic when we're talking about America, when we're talking about the United States. When you work an eight-hour job or even longer, healthy diet can be quite difficult. And so... My goal is not to address all the answers to that in this discussion, but to present a point of view, food for thought for the future. In particular, where it is a convenient way to pursue a healthy diet that is also convenient and that gives you a lot more benefit. And so, for those who would like to come on this journey with me, this discussion about health and diet, we're going to do this in three phases in this discussion. So, we're going to start out talking about a particular diet that is just one of many diets that I would recommend. But today, I want to focus on one. And this particular diet is one that I think you'll find very beneficial and very soothing to the palate. So that would be in phase one. And in phase two, I'm going to talk to you about some particular ingredients that if you were to get these ingredients and you're able to use them yourself, they would ramp up health and well-being from a diet standpoint. And then finally, I'm going to wrap up with a little bit of a personal story from last month that you may find interesting. So let's see what we have here. First, I want you to see that there is a particular cuisine called Indian cuisine in general, and it is among the healthiest cuisines that's out there. And one of the reasons why it's so healthy is that it has approximately 10 to 20,000 years of history behind it. There has been a lot of trial and error that has produced a food combination in northern and southern Indian cuisine that's absolutely healthy. So what you see before you, this is what I call a folly presentation. It may be, it may be um, called something else. It may go by other names, but I call it a folly presentation. You have a center dish, right? And then you have these other dishes. So I've had, a, I've had the opportunity to try a variety of Indian dishes. And so I can identify many of the items here. And so, for example, this is non, non-bread, N-A-A-N, non-bread. And so... I typically do not consume non-bread, right? As I um, find the non-bread to be a little bit um, more on the heavy side these days in terms of my own diet journey, but it's still an acceptable grain for those that um, find it enjoyable. So I'll partake of it every now and again, but these days I try to um, abstain from grains. This here, I believe that's called gulab. It's a dessert. And so it's, it's also another item that I generally 
um, abstain from mainly because it has uh, quite a bit of, of sugar. And I'm speaking more of the processed sugar variety. This is Rata, R-A-I-T-A, -I, I believe is how it's spelled. Um, this is yogurt. And as I try to stay away from dairy, um, I definitely stay away from Rata, but Rata actually tastes very good. And on those occasions where you find the food in an Indian preparation to be very spicy and you need to address that, then you'll find that Rata is a way of cooling down the spiciness. Now, this is a dish I like quite a bit. And I forgot what it's called, but these are potatoes and peas. And the, it's, a, it's a very succulent combination. This is, um, I believe it's, it may be chana masala, maybe uh, chickpea uh, curry. And then this may be a smaller version of vegetable curry. And then you got vegetable biryani, I believe that is. And then this is paneer, uh, it might be paneer masala. And then this is uh, dal curry, which is my favorite. That in China Masala. And so what I found is that um, Indian food in general is very anti-inflammatory, right? And so, and it's also designed, literally designed to digest well. So it's hard, very, very, very difficult to have indigestion with Indian food or bloating. It is tailored made when you have an expert who's cooking it to have Indian food actually disappoint you in the area of digestion, elimination, and inflammation, right? So it is a very good go-to food in terms of a meal that goes down well, and it is filled with nutrients. So you see some of the, the, um, the characters here you got iron, you got folate, vitamin K, and you have all the vitamins and minerals across the span of Indian cuisines, right? So many Indian cuisines that I partake of, they have lentils, they have chickpeas, spinach, cauliflower. So you have a nice mix between legumes and vegetables, right? And so you have a variety of ingredients that make Indian food a good foundation for vegetarian and or vegan uh, uh, cooking and meals, as well as something to explore when you're looking at a type of cuisine that will support that uh, particular dietary path. And then if you eat meat, you do have, um, you know, selections like tandoori chicken, right? And others that um, uh, treats the meat in a very special way that makes it much healthier than you uh, might see in other types of cooking preparations. And so I like doll based uh, meals. Um, I like chickpea based meals, right? And I like the uh, curry based uh, meals as well. And so many of these meals, they, they feature a, a, a combination of Spices such as turmeric, cumin, cinnamon, cardamom, and ginger, right? And some people do find that uh, the Indian diet is great with weight loss, right? So one of the things that um, is key about these spices is that you'll see that turmeric in, in particular has been studied widely. Now, there is some controversy around turmeric in that... Um, the science has come out is shown that turmeric does not absorb by the body. Turmeric is mainly there for the gut microbiome. It's mainly for the um, the good bacteria in your gut. It's not for the body overall. And you can use black pepper and fenuk Greek to boost the absorption of turmeric. But the science that's come out in the past year, I would say, uh, 2023, has shown that there's really no true 
benefit to trying to raise the absorption of turmeric. So taking turmeric pills and uh, turmeric supplements that have black pepper affixed to it or fenugreek Greek affixed to it, etc. You know, that does have some benefit, but your, your mileage will vary, right? Um, and so you're, you're better off um, really just uh, getting the turmeric in your food and doing it in a way that is much more approachable by the bacteria in your gut. Ginger has been shown to help with immunity overall. And so whether we're talking about uh, Jamaican, Asian, Indian, you name it, ginger is a major ingredient in addressing uh, matters of immunity. Garlic is um, a key ingredient, though not all um, Indian dishes uh, feature garlic, but uh, some do, and when it does, it's done very well. And then you have cinnamon as a blood sugar regulator, but it also helps with, um, and if you hear a scream in the background, um, that's uh, one of my nieces who is uh, teething and trying to work on um, the, the growth spurts um, in, in, with their teeth. So, but you got uh, cinnamon, which helps with the overall immunity as well. And then uh, lentils have, uh, you know, it has your protein, um, but it also has fiber. And what I've learned about fiber recently is that it's all about soluble fiber and fiber that the bacteria can that uh, the bacteria can actually break down. And when bacteria can break down uh, fibers, that helps them grow and populate, right? So one of the things I do try to avoid is I, I do avoid yogurt. And so I don't uh, consume yogurt. I, I stay away from dairy-based ingredients in general. And I've explained that in earlier videos, and I may explain that in future videos, but I'm going to forego an explanation of that in this particular uh, context. Uh, spinach is something that um, where many greens you want to eat raw if you can, but spinach is one of those exceptions. And so it's good that it's cooked in Indian uh, cuisine and that it's cooked extremely well. And so we have antioxidants, we have brain boosts, right? And so there's a number of benefits that we have with Indian cooking, right? And so when we're looking at the different types of uh, Indian dishes that are out there, I had this one recently. Um, uh, I actually, forgive me for the pronunciation on this, but I call it kol uh, batur. But um, it's basically um, a, a chickpea curry. It's like chana masala, almost, almost like chana masala. Um, but it has a little bit more of a spicy kick to it. And it tastes quite, quite well. Um, if you decide to get something like this, you can simply put the, uh, the, the bread aside um, you can put the bread aside and you don't have to eat it if the deep fried nature of the bread um, doesn't work for your dietary um, choices, right? It's all about being able to find a good base in terms of healthy food and then being able to work with that and then move forward uh, from there. So, for example, you know, if you decide to get uh, Indian food from a restaurant, you don't necessarily have to eat everything that's served to you like Reta, you know, or samosas, you can forego those things, right? And just focus on core dishes like uh, like this one, for example, right? Um, and so, but here's the thing. Um, again, digestion, antioxidants, immunity, heart uh, benefits, weight, sugar control, brain function. I mean, these are all things that we can find from Indian food, and it's very, very useful. Fennel seeds. And I'm going to talk about fennel and coriander and, and cumin in a little bit. But I just want to overview this just a little bit so that we can start to see where we're headed in terms of health, right? And so when we're talking about ingredients, you look at turmeric. So turmeric is, is that, that ingredient that not only gives many Indian dishes that quintessential orange 
appearance, right? Whether we're talking about masalas, right? Or certain types of curries, right? But I love that color, by the way. I love that orange hue. It's absolutely wonderful. Before I even knew what turmeric was, I always liked that color in some of the Indian dishes. But the main thing that, from a science standpoint, uh, people focus on is uh, curcumin and the curcuminoids, right? And so the curcuminoids is going to um, help the body, or not the body. I need to correct myself because I've learned recently that it's not so much about the body, but about the bacteria in the gut system. But the, um, the curcumin will help with anti-inflammation, and it's also going to help with the oxidative process um, while the, uh, the, the microbes are doing their work in converting nutrients into energy and building blocks for the body, right? And so if you have the bacteria in the gut extract these nutrients and these other beneficial factors in the right way, then it helps, it has side effects on mood and overall disposition, right? So that's why you want to have that turmeric. And so, and you can have turmeric any number of ways, right? Um, so you got regular turmeric and then you got fermented turmeric. I haven't tried fermented turmeric, um, at least explicitly, right? Um, but I'm thinking about trying fermented turmeric in the future because they're finding scientifically that fermented ingredients have more of an impact in the positive than just your regular ingredients. So chickpeas, um, absolutely um, wonderful uh, legume. And there are some that actually classify chickpeas and lentils as a type of fruit. And so uh, that is for a future discussion as well. But suffice it to say, they are known to build flesh on your body. Definitely a flesh-building ingredient. And so um, chickpeas are wonderful in that way. And here we see we got magnesium, we got potassium, right? That's a key part of your electrolytes and building your system and building your body, right? And then look at these vitamins. And you're getting these vitamins naturally. You don't have to take supplements. You can eat the right foods. And you have your supplements you have your isolated chemistry merged in with your food, right? So instead of taking pills and taking these other things, it's all mixed into your food, right? And so um, mung beans, right? And beans in general, and I like to sprout beans when I uh, do them myself because when you sprout the beans, you amplify the actual benefits you get from the beans. Okay, and I generally don't do kidney beans though, but I definitely do lentils, right? And lentils have numerous uh, beneficial effects, as does ginger, right? Ginger is great for immunity. It's great for helping you um, deal with digestion and elimination. Cinnamon as well, and cumin. Now, cumin can be an acquired taste for some. I've always loved the taste of cumin. And so when we're talking about cumin and we're talking about turmeric, right, there are people that I know that don't like the taste of these things. And basically what that is, is that's the candida in the gut. That's the candida microbes in the gut that have populated to an extent to where they are communicating with the nervous system and moving you away from those beneficial compounds which would work against the candida. Candida is they can their type of bacteria that's in your gut that if they overgrow because their their ba their their main food source is sugar. And if they overgrow based on a on a sweet tooth, right? then they, their, their populations will be such that they will influence your actual taste buds and taste decision-making away from certain healthy beneficial compounds that can reduce 
their population and their numbers. It's actually war sometimes in the gut when things have destabilized in the in the direction of lower health, right? And when I say lower health, I'm referring to, you know, you like sugar, you like processed oils, you like thick breads, you like um, all those candies and all those kinds of things, right? And so soda pop, um, etc. right? That's actually the bacteria in the gut driving a lot of that. That's not driven by the brain. That's not driven by uh, the mind or the genes or anything like that. That's driven by these gut, these gut uh, uh, microbes where it's like it's a balance, right? And if the, it's like the crypts and the bloods. And if the, if the wrong side actually uh, gains more influence, they're going to shift the overall body's orientation, especially the taste buds, in the direction of, hey, I want that sugar, and I, I want that I want that uh, particular compound from pizza and from hot dogs and hamburgers and you name it. I want those compounds because that's what fuels that side, you know, in the gut, right? And then that other side of the gut, which can help build against inflammation, build against these other things, right? Well. Uh, they don't get much of a chance to uh, d- do the work that they're able to do as far as detoxification, elimination, and building up the body in a more beneficial direction. Fenugreek, Greek, or Methi, it, it, I see how it's spelled. It's, you, you might say Methi, but I've heard it pronounced from people uh, from India, uh, Methi, right? So I tried to say it the right way, but, you know, it's okay if you say Methi. But, but Fenugreek, Greek, as it's uh, uh, known in, in the West, is um, it doesn't just look like this, right? You can also get it in leaf form, which is green, and um, you know you can also get it in a powder form, which is going to be somewhat white. Um, so between the leaves and the seeds, right, um, it's going to have a, a very interesting taste that I would not uh, call sweet. Okay. Um, but it's definitely um, a beneficial part of the meal um, where you, where you uh, where, where it's where it's present. And so so yeah, so these are some of the, the, the wonderful ingredients, right? And then what I want to talk about are some of the dishes, right? And so you got uh, you got uh, coal masala, right? And you got the doll, Jalfreze. Um, which is not an original Indian dish, from what I understand. It was in, it was invented during the British occupation of India, right? But it's still cooked extremely well, and it's still healthy, right? So, um, Jafrezi is going to be a nice transitional dish for those that are trying out Indian cuisine, right? And then you got masala bindi. I've had this a few times in my life. But I haven't had it often, but it actually tastes really good. This I actually had, um, I believe, a couple of days ago for the very first time. It may not have been the first time, but this is the first time I know the name. But I now know this name very well. Bangan Barta is one of the tastiest dishes I've ever had. And this this is absolutely phenomenal. you you got to watch yourself with this one because... Um, it's made so well, you will overeat this if you have the opportunity. So, so be careful with that one. Um, but there's no problem if you do overeat it. And so this is what Indian, this is what spices look like uh, in, in, in Indian cooking, right? In, in a lot of ways where, you know, you can have them in leaf form, seed form, or ground form, right? And, you know, this is just uh, kind of a, a, a walkthrough of, what you can see, this is chana masala, one of my favorites, right? And um, I have taken to uh, cutting up uh, ginger, and I don't really peel my ginger a lot of times. I just uh, keep the skin on, and I just I just cut it straight, right? And there's those fenugreek Greek leaves, but a lot of times uh, you won't get uh, fenugreek Greek leaves like this. You're just going to uh, get it in dried form if you uh, ever uh, get it in 
you know, for your own cuisines, right? And then I'm getting ready to transition to phase two, where we talk about um, more of the Indian ingredients and in, in Indian cooking, right? And so when you look at um, the preparation in a lot of Indian food, you do have ghee butter. And even though I, I claim vegan, I do make an exception for ghee. I do. And so I make an exception for ghee um, because uh, for two reasons. Number one, it's respectful, right? It's respectful to if you're going to eat Indian food, um, don't, you shouldn't always insist on everything being changed uh, for your benefit, right? And so it's just more respectful to, um, you know, respect um, that ingredient. And then uh, number two, it has beneficial uh, aspects to it. And it is done in a way that is very clean and you it, it would uh, border on being what they, you might call halal, right? Or kosher, whichever way you want to go with that. Um, but when I cook myself, I don't use ghee and I don't use vegetable oils. I don't use any processed oils. I use either avocado oil, coconut oil, and in some rare cases, um, olive oil. Um, and I might use uh, sesame oil but I primarily use either avocado oil or coconut oil, right? So if it's up to me I'm, and I'm cooking meal like this, I'm going to focus on the coconut oil and I'm going to focus on the uh, avocado oil. And these days I'm actually leaning more towards av avocado oil because of the high heat uh, rating that avocado oil uh, naturally uh, has. And I want to cook with oils that have a high heat rating like that um, because you don't want to consume oils that have been denatured where you start to uh, contract, um, I think it's called catechins, perhaps. I think that's what that's called. I, I might have that, uh, may have that uh, thrown off, but... Um, you're definitely going to end up with some um, non-beneficial compounds when you denature the oil and you have it on too high. It's been it's it's uh, exposed to a temperature that has brought it down. But when I cook with coconut oil, then one of the ways I, I avoid that is I am essentially um, cooking a low heat. And when I say low, I'm not talking about medium and then switching it to low. I'm talking about the pot is set on low. Let's say you got a dial from low all the way to 10, 10 being high. Okay. I'm going to have it on two and it's going to stay on two. I might adjust it to three somewhere in the middle of the cooking, maybe, but you know that on if the, with the right pot, heat will actually build up. And when that heat builds up, even on like on a super low setting, if you let it build up for like five minutes, it's hot enough to cook spices and then uh, heat the oil and then cook whatever you put in there. And if you keep the lid on, it stays uh, hot, but you're able to cook it all the way through. And, you know, I try to keep my cooking to no longer than five minutes if I can. Ten at the max, right, just depending. And then I'm able to successfully cook for that long of a time on low using coconut oil without denaturing the oil and having the, and then the beneficial aspects of the oil is in is transferred into the food but in typical cooking right where you just using that medium heat or that medium high heat and in some cases high heat uh, coconut oil isn't going to work because it's you're going to end up with a conversion in the oil that is going to uh, create um, you know deleterious effects uh, as far as your gut, all right? And I also like to uh, cook with coconut milk, straight up. So, um, uh, like, let's say I take cabbage, and I will actually um, marinate cabbage in coconut milk the same way you might marinate uh, cabbage or greens in water. So, if I'm going to uh, cook cabbage or uh, broccoli in a liquid substance, I use just straight up coconut milk, and I do it on low, and I simmer it, and it comes out extremely well and nice and sweet, natural sweet, right? Not no added sugar and that sort of thing. 
but natural sweet and the coconut milk infuses into. So that's a little bit on the Thai cooking side, right? But it works well when you mix it in with uh, Indian Indian cooking, right? So this is uh, also another dish I had recently, and I'm going to talk about that in a later video, right? And so, uh, but this is an absolutely wonderful dish. It's one of my favorites. I love vegetable kadai sabzi. I love it. Man, I love this. This is absolutely wonderful. And so um, this has, as it, as it shows, beneficial vegetables. And it's cooked in a way that it digests well. And you're able to get the beneficial nutrients from it. And so... Uh, that's that's one of the the benefits of this type of cuisine, right? And so, again, this is ve this is a typical um, a preparation of what's called vegetable jalfrezi. Now, here's the thing: vegetable jalfrezi, vegetable kadai, and uh, what's called vegetable chetanadu or chetanad. Um, while the way it looks here it looks great, and I would eat it this way. I do prefer to have a little bit of a saucy mix to it because the saucy mix is going to digest well and you it's able in that's that saucy mix which you can use coconut milk as your sauce base right um, you can you know do any number of things um, a, a tomato based sauce right and if it's um, saucy enough then if it's going to flow to the stomach and then the uh, intestinal system um, much more much more smoothly, right? And so um, there's all kinds of ways to learn about Indian cooking and how to um, cook these. I actually don't read these recipes. I'll be totally honest and transparent, um, right? Because I go more on an instinctive uh, way of, of way of cooking. I don't actually follow a recipe book, right? It's just not my thing. Right, I just I don't sit over a, a stove or or other cooking uh, you know uh, apparatus and uh, say I need to do this 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 like that from a book. I am thinking about doing that in the near future, actually getting uh, recipe books and maybe uh, trying that out. But at present, I follow the more uh, instinctive way. And then here again is uh, bang and barter. It is definitely when it's cooked properly. It's definitely spicy tangy i'm not emphasizing the spicy part but the tangy sweet and sour woo, it is absolutely fantastic and you can't even tell there are eggplants in there it's just some kind of like it's like almost like a you got that tender chicken and it's just, it just comes together very well so but that tanginess is, is absolutely wonderful when it's cooked properly right so, I don't know how the, the one I had recently was cooked. It actually was much more, uh, well, you'll just have to wait till a future video to see how um, the one I ate came out, right? And so, all kinds of recipes out there. Um, I love the way these look, these vegetable uh, combinations, right? Uh, absolutely fabulous. And then, I didn't know there was such thing as uh, black chickpea curry, um, but that looks absolutely fabulous. Um, I tend to like my sauces to look more like this, right? Or to be coconut milk based with, um, you know, fenugreek Greek leaves, right? I tend to like one of those uh, types. Um, and this is not, this is not too bad here. I mean, uh, this one is, um, and we're now into phase two, by the way. And so this this is uh, this is just an example, right? Some of the ingredients that you have. Look look at these healthy ingredients. You got onions. You got some tomatoes. You got garlic. You got ginger. You got turmeric. Um, red chili powder just depends on the chili powder um, because if you use chili powder incorrectly, it will uh, spur inflammation. So you got to watch that. And you got to watch your tomatoes. But the way it's cooked in Indian cooking, it doesn't do that, right? Cashews, same way. Um, I wouldn't re recommend eating cashews straight up. But soaked, totally different story. Same way with almonds. Coconut oil, there we go. Um, and you got coconut milk. Uh, curry leaves, right? 
And then um, you got some water, a little bit of salt. And then if you're going to be uh, making a, a, a paste, right? I mean, you got black cardamom. So you can just watch these different recipe concoctions and the parts that, you know, you have issues with, you can substitute that out and it, it won't, it won't hurt anything. So if you, if it says, if it calls for like regular oil or vegetable oil, you can swap that for coconut oil. If it call, calls for, um, you know, sugar, you can take the sugar out and maybe use coconut milk and it will still turn out just fine. Right. But notice how the spices are cooked by themselves. Right. Okay. So, you know, that's, that's an important part that you're going to see across the board, right? And so you cook things in layers. You don't just throw everything all at once, right? It's just cooked in layers, and you're careful with that flame. You're careful with that flame. And as long as you're careful with that flame, you're going to be good. So let's talk about these, these ingredients. So this is Ponch Foron. I did some research about a month ago. I was looking at... Um, how chana masala was made. That's where it all started. And I learned that you not only have chana masala, the dish, right? But you also have chana masala, the spice. Okay. And that's going to make a little bit more sense in a minute. But I wanted to start here. So in apparently in traditional, traditional Indian cooking, and I'm talking way outside of my league here. Okay. But from what I've read, right, I didn't watch any videos on this. I actually read up on this. I did some research. From what I understand, in the traditional Indian cooking, there's like these five, uh, um, these five spices, right? And if you use them correctly with the right oil, with the right cooking method, you can pretty much cook just about any other dish or at least cook a wide range of dishes. And Ponch Foron is one of the ways, one approach to doing that, where it's like you got this spice mix that has the right combination of the spices, right? So you're not like getting a little tablespoon or a teaspoon and trying to scoop out of a spice jar the right amount of spice, right? And so um, that's basically what you have there. And... So that's what this is, is a very convenient way to um, get all your spices together so you can get like a tablespoon of out of this jar, for example, and pull out these particular spices. And, and notice there's, there is seed form, right? So you can do this in, uh, in one of two ways or both. You can just actually uh, heat up the pan, Get some of these in, in the pan. And that's going to bring out the aroma and the oils from the seeds, right? And then you can add in other ingredients and oil on top of that, right? And then the second way you can do this is if you have a mortar and pestle, right? And you want to ground these spices up or even a spice grinder, however you want to, if you want to go modern with that, then you can take these and you can actually uh, create your own spice powder, in real time, right then and there, right? And um, you can do it either way. And then you can also just heat up the seeds, right? Like I said before, and then after you've heated them up, then grind them up. And then you can get another a, a flavor effect from that. It's going to create a flavor effect, but it's also going to activate the seeds, um, right? In, in some cases, right? So absolutely uh, fabulous uh, stuff here, right? And so it, this is a good way to cook in a much more um, uh, traditional and ancient way that is also somewhat more convenient. And then this is chana masala powder. I didn't know such a thing existed. That's like, wow. You know, I haven't actually tried any of this stuff out myself. I, I do it. Um, how you, I say I do it in a, in a much more manual way. So I have it. it I, so I might have a, a, a jar of uh, cinnamon powder, ginger powder, uh, fenugreek Greek powder, coriander powder, right? And then I'm, I'm just I'm just mixing those into uh, the, the pan and then adding oil and that sort of thing, right? But 
when you have it already mixed up like this, then you have the right mixture for the, the type of recipe, right? In this case, making um, really good China masala, right? And so, um, so th this is an actually, this is an absolutely great idea and it comes in different uh, uh, temperatures. Here's medium, you know, I'm going to want it in medium or I'm going to want it in mild. I, I typically don't do spicy, um, except for uh, immune uh, situations like getting over colds and getting over um, mucus buildup. I find that for me, spicy actually is a good way for me to actually uh, get over colds. And so I, I do do that. But, but in general, um, I did not know that pomegranate seeds was a, 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 a part of that. Right. It's like, OK, that's that's awesome. But you got all the you got all these spices. Some of these spices I never would have considered. I never would have thought about them. Right. But there they are in the right combinations. So um, for those that want to like um, make more authentic chana masala and get closer to flavor uh, profile that you see in uh, Indian restaurants, this is one way to go down that road. Right. And then you have a uh, straight up curry powder, right? Mild. Yeah. So, and again, you got all the ingredients in the right. I mean, so, I mean, you know, when you compare this to, let's say, uh, something like this, where, you know, you might have to do a little bit more work. I mean, you can actually combine this with, with this and still end up with something pretty awesome, right? And so, but yeah, um, there, so then you got your cumin, you got your garlic, you got your fennel seeds, your curry leaves, your mustard seeds. Did you know that broccoli, cauliflower, and, um, what's that other one? Um, and cabbage. Yes. Broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage all come from uh, mustard seeds. I just learned that recently. It was awesome. Anyway, so you got your ginger and your black pepper, fenuk Greek right? And turmeric, you got them all in the right combination. And this here would be an ideal type of spice blend to, uh, for many meals to, to get, um, uh, the, the right amount of nutrients from the spices, right? And then garam masala. All right. I do have garam masala. I don't have this brand of it. Um, I got a different brand. Um, and, I'm glad I waited all these years to get garam masala because I would have used it wrong. <laughs> so I am so glad that I waited um, to get garam masala. I mean, I waited a, I waited a long time because I've always seen it. Um, but it's like, you know. But anyway, so but apparently this is the one of the best ways to use it is after you've cooked the dish or near the end of the, the dish. So that technique where you heat up spices and all this kind of stuff, apparently you don't do that uh, with garam masala. You, you use it in a different way. So at least that's what that's the impression I got. So um, and then this is another spice that I have, and I also do not have it from this brand, but I absolutely use this uh, quite a bit in a lot of what I um, cook. Um, and so and. Um, I got a, a mild version of tikka masala, and um, my version does not have paprika or Kashmiri chili. So this is a more premium version than what I actually use, right? Let me see. I'm gonna read off what mine mine actually has. My my particular blend has uh, coriander, and it has uh, cumin, and it has fenugreek, Greek, it has ginger, it has um, black pepper, it has chili pepper, nutmeg, clove, bay leaf, celery seed, turmeric, and onion. Okay, so as you can see, um, what what I got is billed as, um, oh, so the, actually that's my mistake. I, that's not tiki masala. I got, what I got is curry powder. So yeah, it, it kind of matches, but it, it still don't match this one all the way, right? I was thinking about getting a tiki masala um, spice blend. Actually, I did, but um, I used that up 
and it didn't have all of this either. So, but, but yeah, so these are the different spices um, that you can get. And so, um, so I want to thank you for uh, hanging in here with me on this discussion about health and about ingredients that can boost health. And so now I'm going to um, um, talk about um, diet and uh, Indian food from a, a personal standpoint. And I'm going to, um, that's going to be in uh, phase three, which um, is coming up in a few moments. So stay tuned. And uh, the next segment of this discussion, um, I'm going to talk about a, an event with uh, my brothers where we um, had um, a, a, an experience with Indian food. That's why I took a little taste of everything I All right, this is a Lu Paratha. This is a vegetable birani folly dinner that was made vegan style. And then these are puris that were added to it. Now this is my brother John and he's enjoying lamb curry, goat, 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 curry. goat curry. He's enjoying goat curry. And extra it's spicy. extra spice. Is it extra, is it spicy enough? It's pretty spicy. Okay. Is it is it the spiciest you've had of the different restaurants we went to? No, it is not. no, it's, no, it's way more spicy. It's way more spicy yeah. than it's any good. of the restaurants we've ever yeah. been to. Okay, and then so he had the uh, goat uh, curry, and then this is a uh, regular curry that my brother Mark uh, said it was too spicy for him. And you have lamb curry, is that right, Mark? Uh, I think he said lamb. Did he yeah. say lamb? Yeah, yours is lamb curry. And then you have sambar. He has a sambar soup and he has a chana masala soup. So, yeah, Mark is uh, really enjoying himself right now. And so all of us brothers are here together enjoying this meal, enjoying health, enjoying taste. And this is this is our host. And um, we're uh, really, really enjoying uh, this meal. Thank you very much for this. Yeah, this is burger. It's perfect? Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so we went to different uh, restaurants serving Indian cuisine, and this is the best that John has ever encountered. And Mark um, had some had a spicy dish um, a, a week ago from a different Indian restaurant, and it just didn't work with him. But this particular meal that he had, um, the lamb curry, um, Mark is absolutely enjoying it. Um, does it? No. I see it. Yeah. So, oh, he, Mark is commenting on the spiciness uh, that's uh, hitting John. And Mark, how are you liking what you're eating? Different, but good. Okay. And when you. When I'm so different. I'm so used to the Southern style, like the Jamaican type of mm -hmm. lamb or curry mm -hmm. food. That's right. That's right. Indian food, they got a different spice that I can tell that they make their own own spice of, you know from scratch and it's totally different but it's good okay i recommend people coming out to Montgomery and try out this in what, memphis yeah it's my first time coming here i'm enjoying it yeah hey i thank you for bringing me here okay i'm definitely gonna pass it on to a lot of my uh friends yeah and associates and let them know hey this is you want to try something different check it out but this is this is popping huh Okay. All right. So, you want that garlic naan? All right. Let's see what your first bite is like. What you think? See, they didn't uh, baste it with butter, so the surface is plain. A lot of times when the naan, see, this one has butter on it. This one over here, that has butter on the top. But this one is plain. Yeah. So you can dip it. Oh, look, you dipped it in, you, so you dipped it in both the sambar and the chana masala. Do you like that chana masala? Which one is chana masala? This right here. It's a little spicy. A little spicy, mm -hmm. but tolerable? Yeah, tolerable. Okay. All right. So, it's time for me to dig in and uh, enjoy this vegan version of vegetable biryani that was special made. It's not on the menu, but I thank them for making this for me. Man, this is the so, best no. special biryani I've ever had. Oh, yeah. No, that's where it was at. <laughs> and I got there and he was like, all right, so. Man, give me a little piece, man. Damn, man. Oh, you 
You want to try some of this? Yes. This okay. Yeah, this is good. Here you go. He's coming in, but we're gonna walk I'm him through sorry, the woods. I'm sorry, putting my hand like that. Girl, we parked. We parked him in the parking lot on the back side of the woods. You think you should have got this? Yeah, that's it. I, I think you I didn't want another piece. Business, you're no. Try, no, try another piece, I'm man. Full. Well, that's why I'm offering you a piece because I'm actually full. I'm, I'm uh, overeating right now. Too, I heard the story a million times, but Mike been hurt. Yeah. And John, you still got some water on your head. You still got some some liquid on your head. No, it's it's good for me. Mm. Man, I'm good. You told you told that goat up, man. Oh yeah, that goat man. Man, mm. that was good. Mark, you made good progress on your on your lamb. It was a lot, one. It was it, a big. It was a big dish. That's a big dish. It's yeah. a big deal. Mm. Mm -mm. I don't wait. Any Indian dish besides this one ever again. Ever? This is it. This is number one. That is, that's it. So that's number one, huh? That's it. Okay. That's besides, it. Besides me? No, nah, that's number one. This is number one. No, nah, you, nah, you ain't had this. Oh, yeah. Good meat. Good rice. Very flavorful. Very tender. Yeah. When I say it's tender. Good. It don't taste like liver, but it's spicy. Good. That escalate softness like mm. that. Uh, now this is rice pudding. I believe it's called cure, but mm -hmm. yeah. Got a little peanut or that's peanut. What? Come on, Mark. I know it's it, it, it's it's a little. I am so full. This is. Who feeling? That's why you, you sip it. Look, there you go. What'd you say, Mark? I taste definitely the peanut. I definitely taste. Okay, it's, you get this creamy. You don't taste no pasta, but you. you, you it's like it's different. I know. I ain't, I ain't had this experience. It's like. I'm gonna tell you exactly what it is. I'm trying to see what kind of desire it is, you know, what, what I done tried that I had of this before. Like any type of dessert. I'm trying to see what type of dessert this that's equivalent to this. Okay. Right. My plate is clean, by the way. I had a little that chair minced carrot pickle. Pickled Shut carrot. Up. I ain't had no experience with this before. Tastes good. It is good. It's different. A little sweet. Not super sweet. Not not too sweet. It's like a warmed up, high price ice cream. Sunday. For real? Yeah. Okay. With actually good ingredients. Hefty ingredients. That's right. That description's different, though. I have to admit. So. When I say. We're having a different. great time. And this is it's absolutely awesome stuff. And. This is. This is. This. What's. This the rice? It's a mixture of rice and other ingredients. I don't know what it is, but hey, it's good. I can yeah. definitely taste the pecan, I mean peanut. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, it's like a hot sundae. But what you know is it's good. Yeah. So what did we actually eat on this occasion? So I had a uh, china masala. No, let's correct that. I usually have either chana masala, right? So I typically get chana masala or I get um, spinach dal curry. Those are my two go-tos at this particular restaurant. In the past, I have done the mixed vegetable masala and I absolutely love that one as well. When I used to do dairy and dairy-based ingredients, 
This was my absolute favorite of all time. Navaratan Korma. Love that. Right? Absolutely love that. And I would still do this, except for the yogurt, right? Um, one day I will be brave enough to try this. And when I say brave, I mean, you know, can I just eat a mushroom-based dish, right? I mean, I don't mind cooking one myself, but um, I'm just not generally a fan of ordering a dish that consists primarily of just mushrooms, okay? That's just the thing. But before I do that, I probably would try the okra. But most of the time, I do chana masala or spinach dal curry. I used to love malai kofta. That was that used to be my all-time favorite. And sag paneer as well. Used to love that. Um, but these days, I'm doing uh, chana masala and a spinach dal curry. I think I'll give the eggplant curry a try as well at some point. But you'll notice this is called a folly dinner. And look what it what it what it uh, consists of. It, it comes with a side order of dal of dal lentil, right? A lentil based soup, as well as sambar. And then you got your vegetable of the day, which is basically a curry, right? And then another curry, and then reta. I asked for the vegan preparation, so I don't get uh, reta with my with my dish. Uh, I do get rice. And instead of naan, um, I get uh, a puri, P-O-O-R-I, which is lentil-based, right? And then papadam. And I also don't get a dessert as well. So I get it like this, right? Okay, and I like it like that. And then I get the main entree as well. And then what John got was a goat curry. And it was it was uh, prepared ultra spicy, ultra spicy. It's the way John likes it. He likes ultra spicy. He likes spicy food. And he got the a la carte version, where you can get continuous servings of rice and naan if you want it more rice or naan. And I believe Mark got lamb passan, because the objective here was to go with a mild preparation, right? Okay. And so, and this was done in consultation with the chef who um, I consult every time I order an item to make sure that uh, my ingredients are done in a vegan style preparation to the maximum extent possible. And so I ended up getting what's called a um, vegetable biryani. And I usually avoid vegetable biryani, but I wanted to see how uh, uh, the chef approached it here. And the reason why I usually avoid vegetable biryani is I try to reduce my consumption of grains, first and foremost. But also, many vegetable biryanis um, will dehydrate you if they're not prepared just the right way. And I was pleasantly surprised that I neither encountered dehydration nor um, uh, did I have any concerns about um, the vegan style of preparation. It was absolutely delicious, right? And I uh, was wanting to take a make an exception on the grains on this occasion just to see what this would be like. And uh, I wasn't disappointed. Uh, John was not disappointed. And Mark was, was quite pleased with his overall uh, preparation. So I'm glad it all worked out. And um, this is just one slice of the menu. Uh, the menu is actually uh, quite diverse uh, at this restaurant, and um, it's a great way to get a healthy meal, a healthy meal that also tastes good and gives inspiration for meals that one may prepare for themselves.